Hey everybody, Keith Dotson here, and in this video we're going to visit a curious little village in East Tennessee. Rugby, Tennessee was founded by English immigrants in the 1880s and was built to look like a little piece of England here in Tennessee. People still live there, but it's mostly just a cute little tourist destination now, out in the middle of, um, really out in the middle of not much. Now this isn't Rugby, but I wanted to stop and take a look at this little abandoned old grocery store that's on the side of the road a few miles from Rugby. Looking at this collapsing old building up close is not as cool as it seemed when I was passing by at 60 miles an hour. Not being a religious guy, I had to look up what uh, 1 Corinthians 6 means, and apparently it's a little bit of a diatribe against church members suing each other and taking their business outside the church and letting a judge who's not a church member preside over your business. Makes me wonder why it's painted here. Even though this isn't really a terrific find, I do like the old sign. It says Heinz Grocery with two S's, and even though it's barely legible, it's an ad for Kern's Bread. Kern's Bread Company was started as a confectionery in uh, the 1860s by a German immigrant Peter Kern and a partner of his in Knoxville, Tennessee. In the late 1860s, Peter Kern bought out his partner's share and expanded the business into a building in downtown Knoxville. It's still there. And eventually, in the, in the 1930s, the company opened an industrial-scale bakery on Chapman Highway in Knoxville. That plant operated until the 2000s, but it was purchased by the Sara Lee brand in 1989. Peter Kern himself died in 1907. Now, here we are in Rugby. Rugby is one of several towns in Tennessee that were founded by people hoping to start a utopian society. This was apparently a thing back in the late 1800s with the desire to build some kind of utopia. Rugby was established by English writer and social reformer Thomas Hughes. He identified a problem with the English class system, namely that only the firstborn sons of landed gentry could inherit property. Hughes' idea was to lure the unlucky brothers and their families to the U.S. to help build a community based around Christian values and agriculture. By the late 1880s, there were 70 Victorian-style buildings constructed here among the woods of the Cumberland Plateau. By 1900, most of the quote-unquote colonists had abandoned rugby. The new society was a victim of typhoid, repeated fires, land title disputes, and a string of unusually severe winters. Walk with me as I look for architectural photographs to support my own themes about the passage of time and maybe some things that aren't specifically about this town but can have a more universal or broad-based appeal. Also, please forgive any wobble sounds you may hear in my microphone. It's a frustratingly stubborn audio problem that I'm trying to resolve.
Thanks for watching, everybody. Be sure to visit my website, keithdotson.com.